Let's take a look now at Drupal 8's performance settings. We find those under configuration, and then in the development group we have performance right here, and we get a pretty simple page with a few options. First, we're going to take a look at caching. Yours may be set to no caching by default. If we read the descriptive text here, we see that this setting is the maximum time a page can be cached by browsers and proxies. This is used as the value for max age and cache control headers. So what this is telling us, if we look back at our diagram, it's talking about caching by browsers. Whatever age we set here is the maximum age that our site is telling browsers that they should keep any information that it says can be cached. In other words, when a browser requests a page and our site puts it together, it's going to keep its own cached version of the page here for subsequent users that request the same page, but it's also going to tell the browser if we have this set for, say, three minutes. Let's just change this to one minute for now. And then a user visits that page. Our site's going to hand the page back to them and then say, by the way, Go ahead, you can hold on to this page for a full minute, just, just keep it stored on your own. This data, this information that I'm giving you, is going to be considered current or good for a full minute. So if you come back before that minute's up, don't even worry about asking the server for the new page. Just go ahead and, and put it together yourself. Just use the same version of that page. It's important to remember that this is a request or a suggestion our website is giving the browser. The browser can ignore this maximum age if it wants to. Most browsers will respect this maximum age, but they don't have to. So just keep that in mind. So in most cases, when we set this to one minute, when a browser accesses a page, it's going to keep that same page stored in its own cache for one minute, and it's not even going to worry about asking our server if it tries to access that same page before this age is up. We can set this to a max of one day, which is good for websites that are really not updated frequently at all. In most cases, one day is a little bit of an overkill. Again, we can set this to no caching at all. It's really good to do just a minimum of one minute unless there's a specific reason you really don't need any caching whatsoever, because even just setting this to a maximum age of one minute can really save your site a lot of work as opposed to no caching at all you'd be surprised at how much this actually can help a site, just to set a minimum of one minute for your maximum age. Let's take a look and see this in action real quick. So go ahead and set this to one minute and save your configuration. And let's pull up a second web browser and access your site from that browser. Go to the home page. Don't log in. Go to the home page. Click on your first article, view it, pay attention to what the last sentence is as well, then go back to the home page, then pull up the browser that you're logged in on, and we're going to go back, click on your article, and let's edit this, and let's delete this last sentence. I'm going to cut it instead of just outright deleting it, so that way I can easily paste it back in in a minute and save. And we see it's gone here where we're logged in, but let's go back to the other browser that should be using the cached information. Let's click on this article again. And we see we are viewing the cached version of the page because this last sentence that we removed is still there. If we go back to the home page, it's still there as well because this information is also cached. If we wait until one minute is up, we should be viewing the newly updated version of the page, which has that last sentence taken out. So wait a minute if you need to, and then view this page again. By now, I believe one minute is up for me. So I'm going to click on this again. And indeed, that last sentence is now gone because my browser got rid of the cached information. It requested the page again, and it sees the newly updated version of the page. Same thing for 
the teaser version that's showing up on the home page. Let's go back to the browser that we're logged in and developing on. And we're going to go back once again to configuration and performance. We'll look here now at aggregate CSS files and aggregate JavaScript files. There's not a great way to demonstrate this, but just a description of what these are. When you choose to aggregate CSS and JavaScript files, this basically tells Drupal to bundle them together. If you have, for instance, multiple CSS files, which just about every Drupal site does, it will combine those into one big file so that when a browser requests a page and your website sends that page back along with whatever style sheet files it has or JavaScript files it has, it'll put all of the CSS files together, or maybe not all of them, but it'll bundle them to some extent so the browser doesn't have to ask for 10 or 12 different CSS files and JavaScript files. It will, when your site bundles these, it says here, this is the one or two CSS files you need because I've combined them instead of making you request 12 of them. Same for the JavaScript files. This just makes the browser have to do less back and forth requesting file after file after file. It combines them together to send a fewer number of files. Finally, let's take a look at the clear all caches button. This will clear all internal caches. Go back and look at our diagram. Any cached information that's being stored in the database will be cleared out. This is especially helpful during the development of a site, particularly when you're working with themes and style sheets. As you update those, sometimes your website will keep that information cached and as you're testing, you may not see changes. This is especially true for templates. So if you're doing that and you're having a hard time viewing the changes that you make to your template or whatever during development, we'll talk about other ways to make that process more simple later in this tutorial, but you have the clear all caches button that you can always use just to tell Drupal to get rid of all the caches that it's storing in the database and rebuild everything anew so that you're seeing the newest version of, what, of the information that your site has. Now it's important to note that this cache clearing has nothing to do with the information that the client's browser has cached. You can't really send instructions to the browser to say, hey, clear out any cached information you have for our site. If a client has accessed information and it had instructions to keep this information for one minute or three minutes or 30 minutes, then you basically have to count on that browser keeping it for that amount of time, regardless of whether you clear all caches. Because again, this is telling your own system to clear its own cache. You can't really tell a browser to clear its cache. So in the demonstration we did a minute ago, where we were looking at our content and we were not seeing the updated version of the content for a minute because this browser had cached information. If we were to change something and then clear all caches in hopes that the browsers would see new information, we still would not be seeing that updated information for a full minute if we had already viewed the page because our browser already had a cache of it and we can't tell the browser to flush its own cache. If it's a new visitor, however, viewing that page, then our site would not have a cached version in the database and it would be delivering the new piece of content to that browser. That's essentially what clearing the cache does.